Hello, good evening, and welcome back. US will now require negative COVID-19 tests for all passengers arriving from the UK as Britain battles mutant strain, which is 70% more infectious, uh, perhaps. Again, the evidence isn't through yet, but hey, nothing sells like sensationalism. So surely this is pretty much a, a good point, because hey, we know that places like Hunter say that you need a a jab in order to fly and Ryanair was saying if you get a jab and go with their scheme then you save 15% on your flights but if it's a private company on their own whim offering discounts then surely that's fair enough and if it's a foreign country not letting you in unless you follow their rules then surely that is also fair enough so yes of course that's perfectly fine because then of course you're traversing the line of when should the government get involved with your civil rights when it comes to private enterprise and how much should they enforce on other countries as well but i think it's safe to say that they're completely separate and different so just like when it started out trump wished to issue a ban on flights from china initially because of the concern of people from China spreading the virus, which is completely understandable. He called xenophobic at the time, and then told he should have done more sooner and for longer. Obviously, he couldn't have done, otherwise he would have breached his rights as president, um, interfering into the, the state level from the federal level, which he's not allowed to do, and they would have brought a lawsuit against him. So they were just trying to goad him into that, um, making him have a lose-lose situation. Either he'll lose the votes, or he'll lose his rights as a free citizen. So either way. When it comes to the private enterprises, of course, well, if a private business wishes to say that you need um, a particular blood type or particular antibodies in order to convene on their premises, then that's down to their their rights, of course. How does this compare to saying, well, if you've got something like sickle cell anemia, which is most prevalent in the black community, you're not allowed in, well, then, of course, that isn't allowed under current law. So, there are ways around it to do with civil rights, and that is where the law imposes on the way private businesses wish to run. Personally, I'm of the opinion that private businesses should be able to run as they do wish to, as long as they're not violating the non-aggression principle, of course. The only issue here that could be seen from a civil rights perspective is if it becomes de facto law, because you can't do anything which is privately run, unless you are vaccinated or have a negative test for the COOF, of course. But then they will be outsourcing those requirements to somebody else to either test you or to vaccinate you. But again, that is down to the private enterprise's choice. But as far as the news is concerned, there is concerns of the Kent strain and also the South Africa strain, which has now found its way into Ireland and France as well. And so the US does not wish to be afflicted with yet another strain and therefore saying, right, cool, from now, you've got to have a negative test within 72 hours of your departure. Otherwise, you can't come in. And if you cannot prove that when you go into board the flight, then you're not allowed to board the flight. Does that mean that somebody could have been tested negative 72 hours before? In fact, let's say 200 of the passengers, and then just five who were hoping to board did have it, didn't want to get a test because they were concerned they'd be positive, would then mix in the lounge of people who had a test 24 to 72 hours prior, would then infect them, and then those people newly infected would go over to America and infect them, Yes, of course, that is still possible, but you can't get a perfect system, uh, apparently, because, of course, even if you were to test people just before boarding, they could still be positive, but it wouldn't be picked up, it could be a false negative, or it would be too soon to tell, in which case it wouldn't count either. So there is no winning, essentially, unless they just shut the borders completely and quarantine people when they come in to the airport as well the other side and turn them back if they are infected just have really really hard borders that is the way to do it but then it's not very nice to people who you just let onto your land and now you're turning around and sending back which it may not be their fault but if you say that from the outlet then people will quite possibly take that risk and if they refuse to take a test when they're on your soil then of course you're completely within your guides as a nation to turn them back as well it's not very nice and it seems to be much ado about nothing but if that's the decision that they wish to take then by all means take that 
which would also make sense for the UK, seeing as we've had lockdowns for months now, after our two weeks to flatten the curve. It's getting on for 12 months to flatten the economy. And in that time, they still haven't decided to close the borders, which to me makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So yeah, you can't move around and see your family, but you can move around and see your family if they're abroad, and they can come see you from abroad. It doesn't really make sense. And as others have said before, if you really want to be able to, you know, travel and stay in a hotel, then use a dinghy across the channel. You'll get two navies escorting you across and you'll be put up in a hotel. Brilliant. No COVID testing or social distancing required. I deal. So this comes from the Centre for Diseases Control and Prevention, the CDC, who said in a statement Thursday that all airline passengers arriving from the UK must test negative within 72 hours of departure. Their decision marked a turnaround after the Trump administration told US airlines on Tuesday it was not planning to require any testings for arriving UK passengers. Early on Thursday, United Airlines and Delta Airlines said they were requiring all passengers on flights from the UK to the US to present a negative COVID-19 test taken within 72 hours of departure. So this is down to those two particular airlines. And I know Cuomo has been calling for this, of course, out of New York for quite a while because he's trying to cover up the fact that he sent so many uh, ill people to nursing homes to quarantine, which, uh, of course, caused the elder people in the nursing homes to contract the disease and die because of his choices to kill off the old people. So he's trying to hide that as much as he can. As they do mention here from the Daily Mail, that Trump in March suspended entry of nearly all four nationals who visited the UK in the past 14 days, which has reduced air travel to the US from Britain by about 90%. That was okay. China wasn't because Asians are worth more, according to the Democrats. Under the new policy, passengers departing from the UK for the US must provide written documentation of their lab test result in hard copy or electronic to the airline. Airlines must confirm negative test results for all passengers before they board. If passengers choose not to take a test, the airline must deny boarding. CDC said the order will be signed on Friday and is effective Monday. So if you want to go to New York to see the ball drop, then you're going to have to have a negative test. But good luck actually having the money to do that. So they are perfectly within their rights, of course, to deny people from coming in because it is their nation if only the UK would wish to do a similar thing over here or if they had wished to do a similar thing a while ago then we wouldn't have such an issue out of Kent or South Africa depending on who you wish to believe and then it wouldn't be such coincidental timing as the vaccine comes out but these things are just too coincidental it plays into the narrative far too well it's understandable that there's going to be a little bit of doubt about how all this has been carried out but that's it for me. So as always, let me know what you guys think down below. Always intrigued to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. All that good stuff really does help the channel out a lot. And as always, until next time, Merry Christmas and have a good one.